In this video, I'll be showing you how to use Virtual Dub to make a time lapse. It's kind of an old program, and there's a few things to watch out for, but it's not that hard if you know the process. You can go ahead and download the program. It's hosted on SourceForge. So starting with a bunch of images here, I just had my camera take a bunch of stills, and as they're progressing forward in time, they were taken every five seconds, and I want to convert these still images into a video. Go and open Virtual Dub and say Open Video File or Control Open. Navigate to where you have your images stored. Click the first one. Automatically load linked segments this must be checked, otherwise it'll only load one frame. Now this is way too zoomed in because these are quite big pictures. If I make it smaller, you kind of get this weird preview on the right if I scroll forward, like this is the current frame and this is the next frame. So for this, around 50% works. You want to make sure you have the correct number of frames. So it starts from frame 0 and goes to 751. If you look right down here, I'm using the left and right arrow keys to go forward and back. It's increasing and the last frame is kind of a dummy frame, but it should be 751 because 751 pictures is what I had here. If however I renamed one of these pictures and changed the sequence, then if I went and opened these pictures again, make sure it's linked segments still, I'd only get, look, 20 frames. That's because it knows the pattern of these first 19 frames are linked, and then this is a kind of different file name, and so it stopped. If you have this problem, maybe you deleted a picture, or your camera didn't quite take them in sequence, so you can fix that in a program called Fastone Image Viewer, which has batch image editing. First you need to close Virtual Dub, or else it won't be able to rename a file that's already being opened. Go ahead and open Fastone, navigate to where your pictures are stored, do Control A to select them all, and then do Tools, Batch Rename, or hit F4, then it'll add all these pictures on the left to the queue of things to change on the right. Now the template here is what you actually want to call the image, so image and then put number sign, hit preview, and you can see what the new file name is going to be, so we have 751 images, there's the problem one that breaks the sequence, and it's going to be renamed so they're all sequential, go ahead and hit rename. Another program I've used is called Advanced Renamer. It's also free. It works pretty similar. Just go open it up, go and select all your images, drag them in, and then in the new name part, just click incrementing numbers, and as you'll see, old file name and the new file name. Go ahead and hit start batch. And now we just have a bunch of sequential images all the way up to 751. Hopefully you don't need to do that and all your pictures are correct to begin with, but that's how to fix it if you're missing one. Go back into Virtual Dub, do File Open, click the first one, and now since we've renamed them so they're sequential, that 20th frame is going to be fixed and 751 images. Hooray! The other thing is to watch out for progressive JPEGs. Progressive means that on the internet, instead of loading each line of pixels left to right, top to bottom, it'll load a low quality version of the image, and then it'll progressively get more pixels, but it'll kind of like fade into view. Now that's good for the internet, but for some reason Virtual Dub can't handle it. So if you're editing something in GIMP, you need to uncheck progressive. If you have progressive images, it'll be quite obvious, because Virtual Dub will just fail. So I have a progressive version of frame 31. If I copy, overwrite it in the destination, and then I open these linked segments again. If I go slightly before and press play, here at frame 3rd we got a problem, unsupported codec. This error message doesn't make much sense, but I happen to know it has to do with progressive. So how do you fix that? Well, back to Fastone. So there's the 31st frame. If you know specifically, you could control click on which ones you want to batch convert. Because ideally you don't want to re-encode JPEGs, it'll lose quality. But I'm just going to do them all and do tools, batch convert selected images. We want to uncheck any advanced options because this allows you to like rotate and resize. We just want to basically re-encode with JPEG without progressive. So uncheck that and then go to the settings of the JPEG and make sure progressive is unchecked. Choose where you want the new images to go because this will create new copies of the images and then you just say convert. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go fix that and copy a non-progressive version back to replace that one. If I open the pictures yet again and hitting space to go forward hits frame 30 and continues. Most cameras take big, big pictures, and these pictures are taking up like 5 megapixels, which is going to be a quite big video file, so you probably don't need like an 8K time lapse, so we need to shrink this down a bit. Go to video and then filters, and then say add, scroll down, and add the resize filter. Click OK, and now I'm going to change this to 1080p. It'll rescale these to maintain the aspect ratio. Now for the frame rate, you also need to adjust that. Go to video, currently at 10 FPS, I'm going to put this at 
30 because I know that my pictures were taken at a five second interval and it's kind of slow. So I'm going to speed it up and make it 150x speed. This really depends on what you're time lapsing. Now if I hit space to play, Virtual Dub doesn't seem to be able to preview in real time. So the only thing you can really do to see how fast your video is going to be is to export the video and view the final thing. It doesn't take too long, but I definitely recommend exporting it a few times to check the frame rate. But before you do that, recommend adding some compression or else it's going to make a gigantically huge file even if it's only like 30 seconds long. Unfortunately, Virtual Dub doesn't come with really any good video compression built in. So there's this one called the X264 VFW. You can download it. It's a tiny, tiny little program. Virtual Dub will understand that it exists on your computer. And then once you restart it, you'll have this option. Go ahead and configure. And most of the defaults are okay but you have to change a few things or else it won't work at all. Enable zero latency is very important. Rate control, I usually choose ABR for average bitrate and I need to change this. Put it up to 10,000 for like a 1080p video. You can Google a lot of things about MP4 compression. 10,000 and 1080p works very good. The higher the bitrate, the bigger the file, but the better the quality. Output mode needs to be VFW. And then change this drop down to the lowercase H264. And of course you need to enable the virtual dub hack. Okay. Then all you need to do is go to File and then Save as AVI. Virtual Dub only supports AVI. Give it a name and you click Export. And now this will go frame by frame and save your video. It takes a little bit of time, but you can see the progress here and the estimated time. And once it's done, you can view your final video. Hooray, we have a time lapse. Just going to quick review everything because ideally you don't need to do some of the workarounds I did. Just do control open, find the first image, hopefully they're sequential, remember batch rename if they're not, automatically load link segments, click open, make sure your frame number is correct, you can view it to 50%, go to video, add a filter, scroll down, add a resize filter, change this to your desired height, making it 1080, click OK, make sure you set the frame rate, 30 FPS, now add some compression, choose that codec, and then zero latency, ABR, 10,000 bit rate, lowercase h264, enable virtual dub hack, and just save as an AVI.